Alrighty, we are going to go ahead and start with an instant smoke um, on Tundra. And uh, they are going to, of course, heading are towards the river area in Even order to go ahead and ward up uh, the area of the map and have vision of the opposition team. Uh, let's see, there is one ward available on the Storm Spirit who is heading towards the mid lane and it is going to be placed on uh, just above the stairs on the high ground of uh, Bed Boom. So, uh, he will have vision of uh, Ember Spirit lurking around in the area. So, again, he will have vision of... Uh, save as well um, so pretty much all the information has already been provided the tundra uh, regarding the whereabouts of the bedboom team right so a three months more coming out of bedboom and they are going just going to be waiting in the area and uh, where is save going towards i think it's just going towards uh the high ground where uh, there is white mon waiting for him in case if he's able to locate him and break the smoke right so uh i think now uh, it was smoke gyrocopter so the vision would not be there regarding this high ground ward and let's see where uh, the bounty runes are going to go towards there is Miro and uh, save who would be making their attempt uh, but nightfall had to go ahead and level his uh, dragon tail in order to go ahead and survive that gank attempt coming out from bed boom but he would be able to live successfully uh, really does not matter matter much for a dragon knight to be honest uh, but in the meantime there was first kill which did happen in the top area of the map Wherein Pure was able to grab first blood for himself um, in the river area, killing off uh, the lion. Now, uh, this is a start which I'm pretty sure Tundra would not have wanted. Just because giving away first blood to Pure on his gyrocopter is uh, something which they would not uh, kind of would have anticipated. Any which ways, let's go ahead and move on to the laning stage where we'll be looking at a gyrocopter paired up with the Naga Siren going up against a sand king and a lion so this um lane i think pure should be doing pretty much okay I, there is uh, not much kill threat there is well technically a lot of kill threat available on tundra side uh, with 33 and saxa patrolling the area so a couple of good stunts which could come out of tundra which might lead to the downfall of uh, pure but other than that i think pure should be doing just fine once he has a couple of levels up his uh flat cannon and uh, he should be doing pretty much okay in the lane. Uh, the most interesting lane which we'll be looking at is going to be the mid lane, uh, which would be between Loranov and uh, Kiyotaka. Uh, I think Kiyotaka is going to have a pretty good lane. He will have his, he does have a slide of fist already leveled up and uh, the next hip, of course, he's going to go for his searing chain. So, um, again, uh, with the kind of uh, hero that Ember Spirit is, he can go ahead and dominate these uh, magic heroes kind of a thing. But again, it's one versus one in between the spirit heroes and anyone could come out on the top, uh, which we are going to see in a few while. Now, in the bottom lane, we are looking at Lion, who has taken a decent chunk of damage, but Pure is going to be in a lot of problem. Uh, he is going to know there is uh, the successful butter strike, which did come in from 33, and they were able to clean up the gyrocopter in the top lane. So, uh, again, as soon as uh, level 2 has been achieved on the side of Tentra, they are able to make a gank attempt and uh, finish off uh, gyrocopter. Now, um, in the mid lane, uh, Ember Spirit is uh, taking a lot of damage, but, uh, well, as we're looking at it, it is even the Storm Spirit who is taking, who has taken some decent chunk of damage as well. Now, in the bottom lane, of course, we are going to be looking at a Dragon Knight who gave over the first, no, he did not give over the first red, it was uh, actually Lion who gave over the first red, but Nightfall um, should be doing okay. In terms of last hits, he is uh, 8 to 0 currently. Uh, kind of being harassed by safe currently but um, it's a dragon knight right he would be able to survive these attempts coming out from the side of uh, tundra without any uh, from the side of bed boom without any problems at least in the initial stages of the game right so uh, as discussed he would be going uh, for armlet as his first choice of item and of course it is the fire dragon uh, which he has opted for as uh, his uh, facet just because well it's a dragon knight position one dragon knight aoe damage along with the armlet does help him survive a lot in the meantime we did see a kill uh, happening on 33 in the top area of the map wherein it was uh, 
well, it did go in the sharing of Pure and Katomi, but nonetheless, it was a kill on the off laner from the side of uh, Tundra. So, Wedboom making, well, making 33 pay uh, for the over commitment which he made in the top area, hence losing his life away. But again, uh, not too, would be not too worried though. Um, Sand King as a hero can recover pretty quickly, is not uh, hindered by too much. So, uh, nothing too much to be shaken for uh, Tundra Esports currently. Right, not able to get the creeps on. It was Katami who was able to block that camp from spawning anyway. So, uh, right, uh, a little bit of more harass damage. 33 is able to go ahead and uh, level his uh, Sandstorm. And uh, again, vision is something which would be of essence for the side of... Uh, Bed boom because uh, well now it is Saksa who is in a lot of trouble a little more damage required a nice stun coming out from 33 but again it is not able to stop them from getting a kill in fact it is now 33 who could be in a little bit of trouble gyrocopter is chasing after him and it this could be the second death coming out for uh, the sand king in the top area of the map now this is a place where tundra will have to be careful with now they did go ahead and lose their task in the bottom area of the map as well while all the action was happening in the top lane but nonetheless it is going to be pure who is going to be coming out on top in the initial stages of this game um well that would make the entirety of uh uh, well, uh, Bed Boom very happy because uh, Pure is farming pretty decently and in case if he's able to get a good early game, uh, he would be able to make a lot of impact in the later stages. Right, Pure uh, is kind of low on HP, does have a healing Lotus to work with, is not scared of what uh, uh, Thunder are dishing out, but he's playing extremely aggressive on the map currently. Uh, now, they were able to get a reel in, but uh, yeah, a Lion would be able to successfully back away to the safety of his tier 1 tower. Right, so Pure again with uh, two levels in Flak Cannon is able to zone out the creeps and uh, the push out the lane pretty decently. So, making an aggressive move against uh, Gyro after he has a couple of points in his flak cannon becomes extremely difficult because he is able to successfully go ahead and uh, push out the lane pretty decently and then the pulls coming out from uh, Katomi does help the Gyrocopter gain more level and experience now. 33 is going to be cutting the wave. He would, idly, he would have idly wanted to get the Spree wave but uh, unfortunate for him, not able to get any. Uh, but on the other side of the map are pretty quiet at the moment. Um, not much action happening. Dawnbreaker has been farming quite decently. 27 last hits, 7 denies. Dragon Knight doing pretty good, 30 last hits. A pretty peaceful lane. All of these heroes are kind of difficult to bring down in the early stages like the Dawnbreaker and the Dragon Knight, so not much action happening, in, at least in the bottom area of the map. Pretty bowling lane, I would say. Now, the mid lane is going to get more, um, I would say, exciting, because both of these heroes have reached level 6. 7-minute Wisdom Rune are going to spawn, but before that, it is 33 going down again. So they have shut down the Sand King, dude. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how exactly you could shut down the Sand King more. He is already at the bottom of the network chart of all of the heroes uh, from both of these teams. And just above him is Dragon Knight. But again, Dragon Knight does have a built-in Battle Fury. So he would not be too worried about that. But again, Sand King can farm pretty much decently himself. 7-minute Wisdom Rune has been taken uh, one by Lion and one by Hoodwink. So an even trade in terms of Wisdom Rune, not much action happening. But in the mid lane, uh, there is a lot of action happening. It could be Kataomi who isn't... Well, in fact, he is already dead. Uh, there was a TP attempt coming in from Kataomi, but too little too late. And uh, they would end up losing their mid lane in the mid area, mid lane in the mid area of the map. Which uh, does not provide you a good indication uh, for the side of Bed Boom, but uh, they are leading this game with a slight 1000 net worth lead. It's not much, uh, but again, they have something to work with on the side of Bed Boom, courtesy of all of these skills they were able to get on the map. Alright, now, uh, well, uh, it's just the illusions which are fighting it out with Tundra at the moment. They would be able to get their hands on, uh, well, Oh, it's the 9 minute rune, um, 8 minute rune which did spawn, so who did it go to? 
Right, there is an attempt being made on the gyrocopter on the trees for it, and he is able to clear them off pretty easily. I think there was a decent chunk of stacks, uh, which Pure was able to claim for himself. Did make the rotation to the bottom area of the map, but uh, was not able to find anything. So, is just going to use the twin gate and get to the top area. Uh, the bottom mid, uh, the bottom tier one tower from Trentra is being pushed a little, but uh, yeah, nothing to, uh, nothing which is uh, kind of critical. So. Right, so we might look at some action in the top area of the map. There are a couple of heroes rotating towards it. Um, but again, nine minutes in, we only have eight kills, most of them being on support. So, uh, not a very action cat game. Uh, but here, Teaka is taking a decent chunk of damage coming out from Ember Spirit, uh, who does have an amplified damage rune uh, working for himself. So, uh, yeah, just his slide of fist are going to be hurting. And as we are looking at it, uh, Ember, well, Earth Spirit. Storm Spirit has already lost, what, about 70% uh, of his HP already and will have to resort to picking up the Bounty Rune for himself in order to refill the bottle and get himself back into fighting shape. In the meantime, it is going to be the Lion who did go down in, uh, the, ra in the Radiant Ancient area wherein there was no defense to be had, to be honest. Right, so more aggression coming out, Kiyotaka. They were able to get a successful bushwhack connection. He is surviving with a, a little bit of HP, and Loronov is going to survive that gank attempt. So it was a three-man rotation, not able to get the kill, but at least they would be able to apply. Well, not technically, a lot of pressure was applied. In the meantime, I think Bedwooden team are looking to get aggressive on the map. Curtis is his Embers for it, who's uh, having a decent game, I would say. He's kind of low on net worth, but the impact he's been able to have with the skills is uh, kind of considerable. Now, he will be looking for his Mate Slayer as his next choice of item. They would be able to get their vision on Saxa in case of the slight now, the chains. He did not commit it as yet, but he has thrown his remnant in. So, in case required, he can go ahead and fight in, but he would be fighting against a couple of heroes from the side of Tundra. So, uh, deciding wisely, Kiyotaka just going to farm up the creep wave at the moment. Uh, not going to go ahead and go with that aggressive jump into the Radiant Jungle. Right now, attempt is being made. They were able to get the Ember Spirit in, but again, in the process, they are going to lose their uh, Hoodwink and Nagasen. So both supports already dead now. It was uh, going to be Ember Spirit, who is still flying around trying to do as much damage as he can, but again, they would not be able to get the entire vision. Now, Kiyotaka still being chased by three heroes. This is, if this use Lord of his, does have another remnant available, uh, but again, he would not be given the uh, opportunity since uh, the chain lockdowns coming up out from Tentra were too much to handle for uh, the Ember Spirit now. Uh, Bedboom did gain a very early game, a uh, well, early level advantage in the starting of the game. Uh, but eventually they have kind of lost the steam and uh, Tantra have been able to get themselves back in the game pretty convincingly. They did lose the task in the hands of uh, Miero who was able to finish off the support from the side of Tantra. So not much loss, just the support. Um, but again, Gyrocopter going in the top area of the map, wherein uh, their rescue attacker who would be chasing after the zeros. He has his ice sets on 33, but they would not be able to get the distance um, in between them on 33. In the meantime, more action happening. There is uh, the Storm Spirit who is making an attempt on the life of Save. Save is definitely going to go down in the process here. There's a, no, there is a song of the siren coming in from Kotaomi, who has reached level six. Save has is hiding behind the trees now. The question is, how many kills are they able to get? There is the Storm Spirit who is the little shot in HP, is eventually going to go down. But again, the rest of the heroes from Tantra have to back away from that area. Since there are multiple heroes coming in from Bedboom, they also would be able to get their kill onto 33. Or they should be able to get their kills on 33, which they would be able to do so eventually. In the meantime, it is going to be Pure who is going to chase after White Mon, and White Mon is in a lot of trouble. There is going to be the successful connection of the rocket, and then the slide of fist coming in from... Uh, Kiyotaka is more than enough in order to finish off that kill on the support of Tundra Esports. So, nice bit of movement coming out from uh, Bedboom uh, in the last couple of minutes, wherein they are 2,000 up in net worth advantage currently. So, that's something, uh, yeah, I think Bedboom are going to be very happy with. And just looking at the exchange in the previous engagement, it's what 
1100 gold which was gained by them in in just a couple of minutes along with all of the experience and uh, well all the goodies they were able to get now um again ember spirit is working towards his uh, mate slayer which is about 168 gold away and uh, the next team fight which we are going to be seeing is going to be in between uh, well as soon as uh, ember spirit has his mage slayer completed uh, looking at the itemization, uh, Dragon Knight has uh, completed his armlet, uh, so Nightfall is ready to fight. Next, he is working towards his BKB, which should get completed in about, say, uh, 2,000 more gold. Right, so 2,000 more gold, uh, well, 2,600 really. And Nightfall will have his BKB completed. 14-minute Wisdom Rune, one is going to be picked up by... Nightfall and the other one is going to go in the hands of Lion. In the meantime, Pure did go down again in the hands of Storm Spirit and uh, well, the rest of the heroes. Now they would be able to making it. They are making an attempt onto the lives of Nightfall, but again, they would be losing their Storm Spirit in the process. Now in the meantime, 33 doing a lot of damage, but again, he is eventually going to fall. Now Lion is able to go ahead and stab. Well, he was going to use his finger on uh, Night. Uh, Naga side and they are able to get the kill but uh, again it is Tantra who have to pay with a lot of heroes for making an attempt on the position one of Bedboom. Now Bedboom are with a 3000 net worth advantage and in case we were looking at the totality of it, um, I think Bedboom are going to be more happy with the previous engagement uh, as we're looking at it more experience more gold into their pockets though Pure is suffering uh, to an extent uh, but he's going to be okay. Uh, Saksa where are you dude? Uh, you are in the wrong area, my friend. And, of course, Saksa would be going down in the hands of Kiyotaka, who would be claiming that kill for himself. So, Kiyotaka is a hero who is not the easiest to bring down for the side of uh, Bed Boom, uh, for the side of Tantra now. Does have his mage slayer already completed. I think he might go into his uh, Mjolnir as his next choice of item, uh, which would not be too surprising uh, by the looks of it. But, again, he's um, well, still waiting to queue up his next item so we will come eventually come to know what he's going to go for 33 in the meantime does have his bling dagger completed of course uh the next obvious choice is going to be uh the well soul stone uh for uh, bloodstone that is correction for storm spirit which does enable him to do a lot more damage uh well do survive in the team fight for a little bit more periods so uh that is the item for sand king uh of course uh white mon uh, as a support right uh Lorenov has gone with uh, an orchid which is an excellent item against ember spirit and the squishy support in terms of uh well we can say hoodwink but nagasaren not too squishy though um at the moment nagasaren seems to be squishy only level eight so yeah it's going to be free food for uh storm spirit Whenever he's able to catch this uh, support solo, he would be able to make that jump and clean them off without any problems. But again, the question remains, how much does Bedboom are able to make Tundra pay for all these attempts which they are making on the lives of uh, Bedboom heroes? Um, in the meantime, uh, well, let's see where our Dragonite is up to. Well, not too far away, 575 gold away from his uh, blocking bar. And then we might see the aggression coming out from Tundra and that, that, that is a big item they're waiting for. Uh, they are going to go for uh, a BKB on uh, Lorenov as well. So double BKB timing, which would be coming out along with the Bloodstone being queued up. So these are the three big items that Tundra is currently waiting for. And uh, on the side of Bed Boom, uh, right, uh, Aghanim Scepter is queued up uh, for Pure. Uh, he will have that completed in right about uh, now. And he does already have his Crystalis completed along with his Falcon Blade. So by no means, uh, Pure is having a bad game. Is right at the top of the net worth chart currently with 9,600 net worth against his name. And closely followed by the Dawnbreaker. So things looking good for the side of Bedboom as well. Their heroes, their cores are farming pretty decently. Uh, there is a BKB which is being completed by Miero as well. So... Uh, well, BKB is being made all across the board currently uh, for both of these teams. And uh, I think that is the timing we are waiting for before the next team fight could happen. Now, there was vision set up uh, by Bedboom, so they know where Saksa is. Uh, but the rest of the heroes are just too far away. And there is no one making an attempt uh, to get that. But that would have, been, would have been a very easy kill on Saksa in case if there were a couple of heroes available 
from the side of bed boom now uh save uh, we have seen many times save actually going ahead and becoming a beast in the later stages of the game so it would not be too surprising in case if save is actually able to go ahead and well he already does have his rod of atos completed and uh, is going to go into glepner so once he has that item he actually does a decent chunk of damage himself with his um, abilities and later on of course he's going to be scaling pretty decently into the later stages and we were speaking about the hoodwink now level 14 on pure of course level 20 is the big talent wherein he gets his uh, plus three flak cannon attacks on uh, pure and that that's when this hero really does start to hurt on uh, both of these teams uh, or for the side of tundra uh, but i think tundra are doing uh, pretty good themselves in in terms of itemization 800 go more gold for 33 and there are a couple of heroes available from uh, the side of uh, bed boom and 33 is just able to blink away pretty easily uh, without showing himself now it is going to be rosh now 33 is lurking around in the area because does he have his up he does have his epicenter but he's deciding not to go for it i think it was a great opportunity uh, but the rest of the heroes from Tundra are not wanting to take a team fight against Bed Boom. So uh, they are just going to give this rush away. But again, the question is how much Bed Boom are able to make Tundra pay uh, because of uh, well, what uh, they have well they have been able to take the ages of a model free in their hands. So uh, I see a couple of tier two towers going down for the side of Tundra in the next couple of minutes. And uh, again, Bed Boom are going to play aggressive on the map now. They really have nothing to worry about and uh, their gyrocopter is pretty decently farmed and in case if he's able to get his view on anyone so yeah that could seem trouble for the side of tundra now he will have his bkb completed pretty soon uh we have the dawnbreaker uh really balanced gives the vision of the entire map to uh, the entire team so yeah that's definitely does not seem balanced but in the meantime there was a kill on 33 wherein uh, it was uh, the dawnbreaker as we're speaking was able to finish off the kill though things not really looking too good for the side of tundra a slight 3000 net worth lead for the side of bed boom along with the ages of immortal in their hand uh, looking at the win probabilities 52 percent i i thought it, it's about it should be close to 72 um, but again, we have not seen Nightfall join any fight as of yet um, on this map. It's already level 15, does have his uh, BKB completed. Uh, of course, there is no uh, BKB piercing stun available on the side of Bed Boom. So at any given point in time, he can just go ahead and choose to BKB TP away from the area. So uh, not in any threat of dying on Nightfall, can play really freely on the map, does have a free get out of jail card. Uh, in the meantime, they are making an attempt on the side of Bed Boom onto the Tormentor or the Radiant team, but they would not be completing that so. And uh, in fact, it is going to be Tundra who are going to come after their Tormentor and claim that for themselves. Who does it go to? 33. Uh, he's the poorest. But he's not technically the poorest, but yeah, th this guy has been suffering on the map, dude. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, at least that went into his favor. Right, so we are looking at the Bloodstone completed on uh, Sand King. So this does make a huge difference when it comes to team fights. Next, of course, he's going to go for his BKB. So uh, again, he's the last of the cores uh, getting his BKB. Uh, not the Id most idlest of situations for the side of Tundra. On the other hand, we see, do see a BKB completed on uh, Lorenoff as well. So two BKB timings, uh, the third BKB still being awaited by the side of Tundra and Bed Boom. Uh, they have their BKB on their gyro now, which is actually on the courier. And uh, of course, the BKB is already... No, he didn't. Uh, Kiyotaka is going to go for aggressive build and he's going to go for directly Ashiwa's guard, which does provide them with a lot of uh, actually teamfight capabilities. Um, though he will not have that... Uh, 
BKB piercing immunity available. Oh well, just the magic immunity available, but again this could spell trouble. Now they are able to get their hands onto Lorna, who does use his BKB, but the question is, well he's not in any danger of dying, there is no chance they are able to bring down the Storm Spirit. Is able to go ahead and sexuality. No, they were able to get the chains onto onto uh, the storm spirit, and Lorenov is just going to be dead in the hands of Kiyotapa. So nice attempt coming out from uh, Bedboom team, who are able to finish off the mid laner. That actually hurts him a lot. It was the first BKB usage, and then him losing his life right after that does not seem to be a very good sign for the side of uh, Tundra. Now, uh, Bed Boom really on the aggressive. They are going to eye the tier 2 tower next, wherein Pure would be able to bring it down without any problems. Uh, does have his, uh, well, he is going to work towards his Satanic next. So, already this, this guy is huge, right? He's sitting at 14,800 net worth. Uh, Dragon Knight is kind of behind him a little bit. But again, this difference does make a lot of, uh, this difference does cause a lot of problems for the side of uh, Tundra at the moment. And Bed Boom are doing a really good job um, while working on their items. Uh, 5,000 net worth lead. I'm pretty sure the win probability is going to be changing. It is 57% towards Bed Boom. I think it's a little partial towards Tundra. Uh, because I think I would give them around 75% uh, win probability on uh, Bed Boom. And that, that's what the situation looks like for me, really. Right, so they are making an attempt on Tupio, who does have his BKG, is going to pop it, and then uh, the Song of the Siren already committed. So the BKB from Pure not actually getting them much in this team fight, but the question is how much more they are able to do. Now there is a silence onto this Ember Spread, who is going to definitely go down. A lot of damage coming in from the side of Tantra Esports, and they would be able to get a secondary kill onto uh, the second core of the side of Bed Boom. So Tundra Esports are going to punch back the side of Bed Boom convincingly as they are able to bring two, uh, bring down two cores and one support. Um, well, they do. Uh, they did lose their ages as well in that team fight. So fight not really going well for the side of Bed Boom. I think it is the BKB which was more uh, required on uh, Ember Spirit uh, because once Ember is down, they really don't have much control on the side of Bed Boom. And that caused that downfall in that previous time fight, uh, team fight for Bed Boom. And as we're looking at it, more than 3,000 gold went into the pockets of uh, Tundra. They, well, majority of the damage did, did come out of Dragon Knight, who was chunking uh, this uh, gyrocopter down. And uh, he was facing a bit of difficulties when uh, we look at it. Now, we are looking at a Dragon Knight who does have his armlet along with Mask of Madness and Crystallis. So, this hero is dishing out a lot of damage. And once he has his Daedalus Satanic completed, this hero is going to be a handful for the side of Bed Boom. They did lose their line in the meantime in the top area of the map, wherein it was Naga Siren who was able to bring him down. But uh, things looking bleak uh, for... Well, things actually looking equal for both of these teams at the moment. And I think the win probability is definitely going to be towards Tundra as uh, yep, it's 52%. Now, uh, there is uh, a kill on to... No, they are not able to get a kill on 33. He is able to survive with a blink of HP. But again, there is the backup now. There is no backup incoming. And two heroes already dead. Well, it is... Uh, 33 already dead. White Mon is not able to make it air, make it out of here alive. So two heroes lost quickly from the side of Tundra, who were who were kind of coming back in this game. But again, um, losing kills like this is something which they would not have wanted from both of their uh, heroes, uh, definitely. Right, so it is a two-man smoke. Both the supports from Bed Boom have smoked up. Uh, they are under their own vision, so uh, they would ideally want to find a core hero from the side of Tinder, but they are not able to go ahead and find anything at the moment. Uh, just a couple of wards being placed. Again, it is an OBS ward just outside the Tier 2 or Tier 3 tower. Um, and other than that, they would... Technically, Tundra can come back and fight. I don't see a reason why Tundra cannot come back and uh, defend this tier 2 tower. They have all their uh, TPs now. They don't have a TP on Dragon Knight for 19 seconds. So, they are going to forfeit their bottom tier 2 tower on Tundra. And, uh, well, just putting some pressure on the top tower of uh, Bed Boom. 
Right, so after Daedalus, we are going to go into, uh, well, it is a butterfly that Pure is going into. So his damage uh, output is definitely going to be increasing uh, in the next team fights. And things technically are technically looking very good for the side of Bedboom as well. So an, a slight 6,000 net worth lead for them uh, because they are currently uh, putting a, more, uh, a little more, more pressure on the map in terms of the creep wave are being pushed out for the side of, to the side towards Tundra currently and uh, we are going to be waiting for next rush who would be spawning in 40 seconds so that's where our next team fight is going to happen similarly on bedroom they have uh, well thunder they have set up vision outside the tier 2 tower of uh, of uh, bedroom team and another wisdom room going into the pockets of uh, Mir, who is already level 19, does have his SNY and BKB completed, going into his Assault Kuros as his next choice of items, so just tanking up on uh, the Stormbreaker for these upcoming fights. So we are looking at a smoke which has been committed by Bed Boom, and they are going to be heading towards the Rosh Pet. Uh, Lorenhoff is uh, the hero who is showing himself in the lane, uh, but again, he is going to back away towards his team. Now there is a vision, no vision for the Dire team at the moment. So I, I think they do have the vision of the orbs and they will have to be careful how they approach this team fight because getting into a team fight wherein they're walking into the hands of 33 i think he's the most important hero in terms of the disables and damage so in case if they let 33 use his ultimate and fight into his eae or aoe that could spell a lot of trouble and that's what they are not going to in fact they are going to go after nightfall first who is chunking down a lot of damage and what guess what pure is already dead in this team fight so nightfall has already taken down the position one now it is miro who is kind of be wanting to walk away from this engagement but again nightfall is not scared he has committed well he had already used his pkb but the damage numbers are not enough since they have already lost their position one now the rest of the heroes are just going to be victims in this team fight and it is tundra who is going to be coming out on top and uh, somebody please go ahead and tip nightfall for this previous engagement as he was able to take over the complete Complete team fight. Look at the damage numbers to 10,220 damage done by the entirety of the team, and only uh, well, majority of the damage did come out of uh, the Dragon Knight who did 6,300 damage. Uh, that's about what 65% of the entire damage done by the team of uh, Tendra Esports. So yeah, Dragon Knight farmed does not seem to be a good idea for the side of Bed Boom, and they will have to come up with a better response in order to go ahead and. Uh, fight against this hero uh, who does not seem to be balanced at all now he is going to go uh, he will have a double life working for him uh, for the next engagement so uh, things not looking too great and they might actually even lose a couple of towers on the side of bed boom if uh, things go ahead and continue in the same direction we are going to ignore the Russian banners uh, as none of the tundra heroes are interesting in picking up the scrap so they're just going to leave it alone. In the meantime, they were able to get their hands onto uh, the shard, wherein it is going to be Hoodwink who will be able to get that. So just the Hunter's Boomerang is what they will be able to get. In the meantime, the bad news for Bed Boom is that they did lose their gyrocopter again. So yeah, that's this is just one set of rocks, easy, if not two. Uh, in terms of buyback, he does not have a buyback available. So. 60 seconds without your uh, gyro uh, would mean that one set of racks is definitely go down. Uh, is going to go down for Bedroom, who had an excellent start to the game, to be honest, but kind of lost their way in the middle. Now there would be a there are an attempt make being made on the hoodwink, but Don Draper was able to join the fight. They are able to bring down uh, the storm spread first in that engagement but the question is what are they able to do more now they still have a dragon knight problem sand king causing a lot of issues for the side of bed boom where they are just uh, well thrown away there is a buyback which has been committed and Amber Spirit falling low on HP we will have to be careful how he takes on this engagement but look at the dawnbreaker dude she's standing toe to toe against this uh, Dragon Knight wherein they are able to dish out a lot of damage but eventually the damage numbers do not seem enough even they are able to bring down the Dragon Knight there are two supports who are already down there is pure who would be spawning in nine seconds well six seconds technically they are able to get this tight connection onto 33 does have a TP available with the usage of BKB would be able to make it to the safety of his own base 
So um, things kind of a comeback for the side of Bed Boom, but they did uh, they did not lose even their tier three tower. So they did have to commit with a buyback on to the Hoodwing, but I don't think they would be very sad about it because a buyback on Hoodwing really does not matter in the bigger context of this game. But uh, yeah, saving the tier three tower does definitely do count. Okay, so at the end of the engagement, let's look at the damage numbers. Uh, I think the MVP of that fight for Bedboom has to be the Stormbreaker, who did do a decent chunk of damage and stood toe to toe against this uh, Dragon Knight. Now there is no third, um, there is no Dragon Knight available for another 38 seconds. Does not have a buyback available. In fact, it is going to be Storm Spirit, who could be. Well, he just died to the Aghanim Scepter proc on the Storm Spirit, and uh, they did lose the another hero. Now the question is, how much Bedboom are able to get out of these two big core kills on the side of Tundra? Uh, Pure is getting bigger. I, I think eventually he would require a Satanic to work with. Is going to go for a Butterfly as he just queued up earlier. Uh, but I think Satanic could have been better. But uh, there is uh, a Bloodthorn available on Dragon Knight. So his attacks are definitely not going to be missing on this Gyro. So if he's able to get something done uh, on the Gyro during the degradation of his BKB, well and good. Otherwise, this Dragon Knight is just going to chop him down without any problems. Um, now the top tier 2 tower is the next objective being set by Bed Boom, which they would be able to bring down without any problems. There is uh, no storm spread for another 33 seconds, so uh, there is no defense to be had for the side of Bed Boom. Uh, we are looking at a 34 minute mark uh, in terms of uh, the net worth. It is a slight 1000 lead for Bed Boom. Uh, game seems to be pretty even in between both of these teams currently, not changing too much. Okay, so they have control of the outpost uh, outpost as well. So they are going to be controlling this area uh, for the diet team. And the question is, and again, Dawnbreaker is just not in the area. One of uh, the more benefits you get to have with this hero is just, you know, the map control is always on point and the leaves are shoved up against the opposition team because, well, Dawnbreaker just occupies one area of the map and does not let you push into it. So pushing again is a difficulty, though 200 Red uh, could, did a decent chunk of, de decent job on the bottom tier 3 tower, but eventually losing out their heroes is something which they would not have wanted. So uh, it's an even game now. Both of these teams are pretty, pretty much farmed uh, to their heart's content in terms of the basic items required to take a team fight. Now the question is the execution part is it going to be on point there is pure who is going who is dying a lot in these engagements of course has queued up a satanic as his next choice of item 33 is in the area who would be able to butter strike and then go ahead and uh, blink away back into his own base so um it's only the top lane which is being cut by Lornoff at the moment who did does decide to go ahead and tp uh back to his own base so not taking that risk as we said right so next rush is uh well it's still quite a distance between rush is going to spawn so uh we will have to wait uh, for quite some time and uh, these uh picks and prods as in this poking is what we will be looking in the next say um say three to four minutes i would say and uh well we are looking at it smoke coming out from both of these teams wherein they are lurking around near the area now smoke is going to break on the lion but they are able to get the relay on the net coming being connected but it, again it has a, it is a storm who has taken a lot of damage but a, a nice post stop coming out song the siren in order to go ahead and make the gyrocopter safe but now it is going to be dragon knight who could be in a lot of trouble they are going to go ahead and eye the storm spread whom they are not able to bring down as if now there's a successful snowball save coming in from the side of uh, Bedboom as well. They are able to finish up two heroes, but Tundra have already lost their Dragon Knight and their Tusk. So this team fight is over and Tundra is in a lot of problems. They don't have buyback on any of these cores. Did you fall out of the news? Uh, is that is the Dragon Knight and both the Sand King. So um, there are no tier two towers. Is it just Mega? Uh, this, uh, I, I think Bedboom might just have this in the back too. Uh, with the previous engagement coming in, uh, with the amounts of damage they were able to output in the previous fight. Um, again, 60 seconds without your Sand King and 50 seconds without your Dragon Knight. And uh, with uh, the fortification gone, these towers are not going to stand against Pure for a very long period of time. One set of racks already down, Tusk would be respawning in 20 seconds. It is a 2 versus 5 situation. There is an attempt being made by Saxa who was able to Hex. 
Um, but again, uh, what more? But again, flat cannon is something, yeah. Uh, again, look at the damage, dude. Uh, the damage numbers are actually pretty significant coming out from this, uh, coming from Gyrocopter, who did go with a facet of, uh, well, how did he throw out four? Oh, he has his Aghanims. Okay. Right. So, uh, they are able to bring down two sets of racks, uh, which was taken by Bedboom team. A huge net worth blow for the side of Tundra. But again, they are not currently out of it. Uh, but again, the previous team fight did them, did cost them a lot. And uh, yeah, uh, that's something which is kind of yikes uh, for the side of uh, Tundra. Now, Bedboom definitely on the driver's seat. Uh, they are with the 82% probability of winning this game and as we're looking at this gyrocopter is actually uh, On top of well on the top of the network chart now. Yes, he is with 27,000 net worth against his name Dragon Knight with 25 and any team fight which Tundra loses uh, It's just going to be curtains uh, for the entirety of their team Right so just a single set of um, Rocks remaining Tundra and the question is how much are they able to go ahead and defend Roshan is it's going to be an early Roshan just morning and 30 seconds so Bedboom are going to be wary of those timings and they are going to head towards the Rosh pit now uh, without any doubt now if Tundra give this Rosh away to Bedboom I think it's GG they should not be able to kill Gyrocopter twice without many casualties now there is the lion who is uh, kind of technically no lion would now did not have the chain connection and it is going to be Lion who would be able to successfully uh, get back to his base. So a little bit of chase coming out, but Roshan is going to be spawning now. Right, yep, here it is. And an Aghanim Scepter to work with that. Let's see the, who the Aghanim Scepter goes to. I say give it to Dawnbreaker, dude. So let's see the Huda Aghanim Scepter. It's going to the Naga Siren. No. It's going to Ember. Of course, the greedy cores. Um, but it does increase his damage output and his maneuverability in uh, the entirety of the fight. So I really don't mind that item. He does have a Lincoln Spear available with him as well. So not the easiest of heroes to bring down. Now, again, with uh, the day approaching. Uh, Bed boom have vision of the entire map and they well they are able to get vision and now they it was actually a bait wherein ember spirit is caught out is not going to take a decent chunk of damage in fact it is going to be the poor lion who is going to go down just a punch on the face <laughs> coming out from miero uh, does bring down the support now they are going to be looking after Lorenov, but Lorenov is just going to zip away back to the safety of his own base since it is a four versus five situation not much mana left on the storm spirit uh, things looking really bleak for the side of Tundra in this game number one. Right now it is good. Definitely it's the high ground push, right? What exactly are you going to do if you're bit boom? Uh, they are approaching the high ground now. They have a creep wave coming in. Just a couple of creeps now. They have the entire... Oh, it's, it's a double catapult creep wave. And uh, again, they are making an attempt uh, onto the gyrocopter. But again, the song of the siren is going to come in break that attempt and the uh, initiation is spoiled from the side of tundra now the question is how much damage are they going to take ember spirit is just zipping in zipping out of the team fight well uh, they are not making an attempt as if now on the side of uh, bed boom they are kind of feeling um, well playing safe technically they still have the ages of immortal Ramay available for another three and a half minutes so they are not going to risk that team fight does have his BKB available as well. Understanding that, you know, just walking into 33 Sandstorm and then getting what epicentered is, is something that, that that's the way that Tundra is going to come back in this game. If Bedboom does not give that team fight to Tundra, I think uh, Bedboom should have this in the back. But the question is, um, well, are they able to do it? Because it's, it's just one epicenter you require, right? From Sand King, one good epicenter. Onto a couple of heroes, you are able to bring down the Ember Spirit and uh, the Dawnbreaker. The team fight is over. Now, it is the Lion who is caught out. There are three heroes from the side of uh, Bedboom and the Lion. Dude, he just respawned. Show some mercy. <laughs> well, uh, he did not want to save his finger. Uh, would be under cooldown for 30 seconds. Uh, not a biggest of deals. Uh, so yeah, there is no position 5 on the side of Tundra. So this is going to be a 4 versus 5 situation. 
uh, and uh, let's look at the buyback as well uh, there is a buyback available in iron okay um, so it, it would be a five on five fight in case if that happens now pure is heading towards uh, the bottom tier three tower and all the lanes are pushed in i don't see any reason why Tundra should be stopping uh, in order to make this attempt onto the high ground uh, 33 is already there. He is guarding the area uh, Katomi has gone in with his she was got giving away a little bit of vision now There is an attempt being made on the gyrocopter, which is not going to be a post successful He does use his satanic, but he's going to lo use his uh, lose his life before any getting an attempt off Nightfall doing a decent chunk of damage But it is going to be Mero who has decided to show up and fight against the Dragonite who is losing a decent chunk of damage and they are going to lose pure in that team fight. So this is what Bed Boom was scared of and this is what is going to happen. And they are going to lose all of their cores on the side of Bed Boom and not losing anything on the side of Tentra Esports. Surviving with the Naga Siren. Dude, do not fight into the Sandstorm of uh, Sand King because uh, you're just not able to do it. Uh, I think they did not learn their lesson in the right way this time around. I hopefully they have learned their lesson because high ground against the Sand King can get a little tricky, which uh, I think Bed Boom are finding out in the harshest of manners. Though uh, Tentra are two racks down, they were able to successfully defend their base and now they can get aggressive. At least they should be able to get one set of racks for themselves. The creep wave is showing in. So uh, yeah, Nightfall should be able to make a quick walk of this tier two tower. In the mid lane, the tier three tower is being attempted in terms of buyback. There is buy there are buybacks available to be committed by Bed Boom. But the question is, are they going to forfeit this tower or are they going to go ahead and defend it with buybacks? Right. Um, no, they are uh, just going to forfeit it. No, the uh, Tundra wants buybacks. Tundra are not going to uh, let Bed Boom stay with now. There is a buyback already committed by Ember Spirit. Naga Siren is, uh, did not die in that previous engagement. So they would be able to get one set of racks for themselves on the side of uh, Tundra. They are looking towards the second tier to tower as well. Dragon Knight is doing a decent chunk of damage 13 seconds before Pure is joining in the fight. But they have already lost so much. And the question is how much more are they going to lose? They are going to back away before any of the heroes from Bed Boom are spawning. And now they are on the retreat. The question is, are they, they do have the vision set up here. They would be able to deward the wards as well. And uh, Bed Boom understanding that, they're just going to back away. So uh, the game is equalized by Tundra. Uh, 45 minutes in. Uh, well, the melee barracks is still standing, who would, which would be able to regen it uh, to uh, its 100% health. But again a lot of losses on the side of uh, bed boom in that context so well um, by the end of it uh, as you're looking at game has been evened out 70 percent win probability for uh, tundra esports who are well just out of one successful base defense uh, that tundra were able to gain that much for themselves right now uh, the question is what exactly bed boom are wanting to do or uh, how exactly are they wanting to approach uh, this high ground because I, I think they have to kill off a couple of heroes They have to win a team fight successfully before starting it off now There is a team fight which is happening There is going to be Naga Siren who dies first in this engagement and uh, they are just going to be backing away from the stand storm But again, it is a dragon knight who is going to be chasing after the uh, ember spirit which is technically a dieback for him now the question is is uh, Miro going to survive no Miro has just decided to BKB TP away, but a dieback on the ember spirit uh, dude, that's rough for Bed Boom. Uh, there is, uh, well, uh, Pure who is still farming away is going for a Divine Rapier next. Okay, so yeah, things are going to change for Bed Boom. Uh, again, this is the Hail Mary play, right? You are uh, going towards the Divine Rapier. So, uh, in case it, it works, it works great. Uh, but again, there is a Hex completed on the Storm Spirit. So, interesting uh, really interesting what exactly both of these teams should be able to achieve in the next team fight but by the looks of it it is still uh, tantra who are in the driver's seat it is uh, well there is no buyback on the hoodwink as well so they can technically go ahead and go for this uh, tier 4 tower if they want now a mid hex coming in uh, there's a dawnbreaker who is going to die in one well, no that well no the dawnbreaker is dead uh, does not have uh, well, well does not have a buyback available now decided uh, to back uh, fight back but again it is pure who has decided to use his BKB trying to fight in this engagement will have to back away and I think this is GG yep uh, so uh, uh, Tendra are able to take game number one for themselves a roller coaster of a game 
And really, Bedboom really did not have answers for this Dragon Knight. Uh, Dragon Knight, I think the MVP of uh, this entirety of the game. And uh, well, kudos to Tundra who were able to take game number one for themselves. Stay tuned, people. We are going to continue the stream with game number two in this best of three series between Tundra Esports and Bedboom. An excellent, an excellent game which came out from both of these teams, really. Uh, cannot falter anyone. It's just that the Dragon Knight proved out to be too much for the side of Bedboom.